Hi everybody, I'm Pediatric Echo for the Adult Tech again. Uh, I'm Scott Moss. I'm registered in both Adult and Pediatric Echo. I've been doing it 30 plus years, just retired. Um, wanted to go over VSDs today, so ventricular septal defects. There are different types of VSDs that may require different views. The ventricular septal defect is a hole in the ventricular septum allowing blood to shunt from the left ventricle to the right ventricle most of the time. Occasionally you'll see it the opposite way if the right side is very enlarged or if the child has pulmonary hypertension. Uh, muscular septal defects have a good chance of closing on their own. If the defect is small, there will be little to no hemodynamic significance. Um, seen a VSD in a 72 year old muscular VC. That was the oldest one I've ever seen. So muscular VSDs can appear at any time. You know, you, you know, you're doing an adult patient. That's why I always told any of my students or any of my techs that were working for me to make sure they scan the ventricular septum to look for a VSD. Um, Membranous VSDs have a much less likelihood of closing on their own. Sometimes they have to be surgically repaired. That's pretty common. A uh, good size membranous VSD is dangerous for several reasons that we'll get to. Uh, the views. The best view for visualizing a VSD is the long axis view. Although you can sometimes see the VSDs from several views, but to get a true velocity, being parallel flow is the most important thing. So in the long axis view, most of the time you're going to be parallel to flow and you're going to get the best velocity that way. You may have to angle the long axis view one way or the other, but it'll happen. Um, I've seen where a VSD is most parallel to the transducer in the four chamber view, which does happen occasionally because the VSD path um, or the path of the VSD is not always straight through the septum. Um, it can go on an angle. It can it can go different ways. There can be multiple VSDs too. They call that the Swiss cheese effect. Um, we do see that occasionally where there'll be two or three small VSDs in the muscular septum. The bigger the VSD, the lower the velocity will be due to higher right-sided pressures because of the amount of blood shunting to the right side of the heart. So if the child has pulmonary hypertension, you're going to see the uh, right to left shunt. Um, hopefully you won't see many of those patients because they usually don't do so well. Now, color flow Doppler is the, I call it the, you know, godsend, so to speak, um, part of ECHO because uh, before color flow, finding a VSD was pretty hard. Um, very turbulent flow in smaller VSDs, multicolored with high velocity flow. Larger VSDs will be mostly red with low velocity flow most of the time. In newborns, bigger VSDs can be missed because of the flow will be bidirectional. The right-sided pressures are high in newborns due to fetal circulation being slowly phased out. So those VSDs may not be as high in velocity, but you know, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, probably you're going to see a left to right shunt. It's just that the velocity will not be as high. Remember to scan the ventricular septum from several angles. Sometimes the VSD will be high in the long X PA view or low in the tricuspid view. So you have to kind of scan the septum in all three areas in the regular long axis, the PA view and the tricuspid view, all in the long axis, um, you know, view. Um, careful with your color flow move you know methodically up and down to get that velocity if it's there um, I have had times where they said there was a VSD and I scanned up and down and everywhere and couldn't find one um, so occasionally they misdiagnose it so don't be surprised if that happens but if the doc comes up and says no 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 I hear a VSD then it's probably you um, the apex should be carefully scanned small VSDs can be hard to detect in the apex. Sometimes you have to use a short axis view and go way down to the apex to get them. Um, moving the long axis over so you can get them, it's, it's just a harder VSD to pick up. Evaluation, um, how big is the right side of the heart? That matters. <clears throat> what is the velocity of the shunt? The higher the velocity, the smaller the hole. Bigger, the lower the velocity, the bigger the hole. 
My thoughts on QPQS for evaluation of shunts and echocardiography. Well, here we go. Um, I think QPQS is pretty much worthless in the world of echo. Um, the reason I say that is because I have seen some of the most outrageous QPQS um, numbers in kids with small VSDs. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, maybe an adult, you know, it's, it's more accurate. I don't know, but in children, it's not very accurate. They don't use it very often. In fact, um, the last two peds cardiologists I worked for, for never wanted it because it was never accurate. Um, supracrystal VSDs are high in the heart at or above the aortic valve. It is very important to scan the ascending aorta for a shunt. So you scan from the ascending aorta down towards the aortic valve to see if there's a shunt maybe just above the aortic valve. Sometimes the flow will appear in the pulmonary artery. So you will see the shunt go into the pulmonary artery. Um, in those cases, you definitely have a supracrystal VSD. The supracrystal VSDs can cause significant aortic regurgitation, so can high membranous VSDs. Um, that is one of the complications with VSDs is that if they're up high near the aortic valve, they will almost always cause, cause aortic regurgitation. And the AI will get worse as time goes by. So they want to fix these kids as quickly as possible to stiffen up that part of the septum that had the hole in it. So the uh, aortic leaflet has something to kind of, you know, hold on to and have it supported. Now, what will you see? What will you see? Now, in a muscular VSD, this is just a still frame. You can see this turbulent flow going right through the muscular septum. Very turbulent, um, lots of color. You see greens, reds, blues. It's just because it's aliasing. You know, you've got a, a Nyquist limit of what looks like 57, I think. Um, so anything over 57, it's going to wrap around and you're going to get some blues. So obviously the shunt is pretty, you know, pretty high velocity. Um, some people like to measure the shunt from here to here, and they call that the size of the hole. Um, I don't usually do that because color flow can bleed over into the tissue. So what I try to do is turn the color flow off, freeze the frame, and, and try to backtrack until I see the hole open up on the ventricular septum. Then I measure it. Here's a perimembranous VSD. You can see how high it is. You know, you're right near the aortic valve. This aortic valve looks somewhat abnormal. I think this is a leaflet that's kind of coapting on itself. Um, with the ventricular septum, the hole is up high. So this is something that, you know, you may watch for a while to see if it closes, but you don't want to watch too long because if the aortic valve starts leaking, then you've got more problems. All right, supercrystal BSD. I saw this one. Um, I just thought it was interesting. Um, some people would call this a perimembranous. I just I think it's too high to call it that. But you can see this pouch that is formed. You know, the, the body is amazing on how it tries to take care of itself and its problems. Um, this pouch formed to try to close this VSD. Um, unfortunately, with the pressures and stuff, uh, you know, every time it tried to, it, it just can't grow straight across. It's almost like a pouch because the velocities in the RV are, are lower and uh, the pressures are lower. So it ends up forming in the RV and you get what looks like a small hole still left here, but eventually these two would probably grow together. The problem is you're going to have low velocity flow here in this pouch, which could cause a clot to form. And if that clot breaks off and goes this way, uh, you've got real problems. So now here's what I said before. Now remember in peds, we flipped this upside down, but you would still see this type of flow in a for chamber view where the ventricular septal uh, defect shows some greens and some blues. That's because your transducer is up here and it's going away really from the transducer because of the angle the VSD is taking. So high velocity flow showing up in green and you see some blues because it is going away from the transducer, especially here on the left ventricular side. 
Here's another one. This is more of a straight through view with the, actually a little bit of angle upward, which is why it's more red and orange than it is blue. Looks like it goes in this way and comes out this way. So like I said, this is a good example of how a VSD can take any path at once. It's not always straight through. It can take any path at once. Here's another VSD. Um, this one is in a short axis view, so sometimes you pick them up in here. And uh, it's obviously a nice high velocity flow. Um, I probably wouldn't sample it here. I mean, you could. The velocity here is going to be high, but the shunt is actually, its origin is here, so that would be the true place you would want to get it. This is a pathology or pathological uh, slide that I found that shows a very large VSD and you can see how round it is and you know I can imagine how much flow is going through that. Um, this kind of VSD needs to be patched right away. This is not something you wait to patch um, because the shunting of flow can cause severe pulmonary hypertension and you know the baby could die pretty quickly. Um, so anyhow, I don't know what this baby died of. It wasn't listed in the slide, but um, sometimes it's just, you know, it can be anything. This is this is a coronary artery up here, this little round hole up here. Kind of interesting to see that in the cut. And, and uh, this is what looks like RV, but I'm not positive on that. Um, and uh, one of the other things a VSD of this size can cause is electrical problems with the heart because you interrupt the electrical signal that would be going down to the apex. And uh, so the pathway has to go around it. And that'll cause a wider QRS and sometimes arrhythmias and can even cause heart block if it sometimes involves, you know, the AV node, which would probably be up about here, but it's hard to say. Anyways, big hole. All right, let's try it again. So here you see the video and this, you can start to see what looks like a little hole and there's the velocity going through it. And that would be a pretty good place to sample it. You can see the velocity I saw on the slide. It's blocked out here at 6 meters per second. So obviously a smaller hole, but high, high velocities, which just kind of leads you to believe that it is a smaller hole. It is perimembranous, so something, at least in this view, it looks perimembranous. In this view, it looks more muscular. So... That would be a decision the doc would make and you would be just involved in getting the good picture. So here is a four chamber view. So this is another shot at looking at it. Here it looks pretty low. You see the aortic valve here. So some of the support tissue may be bad. So you need to make sure that you get it. So anyhow, that's, uh, that's pretty much all you need to see on that. Conclusions, be very careful to scan all areas of the ventricular septum at angles, at all angles to make sure you don't miss anything. Sometimes a VSD will not appear until the four chamber view or even the subcostal view. Now in peds, we do the subcostal view first, so sometimes you get a shot at it right away. Scan the short axis view from the aorta to the apex. VSDs like to hide, and I mean that. If you cannot find a VSD, see if the peds cardiologist has listened to the baby yet. If they say there is a VSD, then you need to look harder. VSDs are pretty easy to pick up with a stethoscope. So if the doc hears it, there's a good chance you're just missing it. So try not to do that, you know, so you have to go back. I mean, really scan it like crazy and you'll find it. So anyhow, um, future lessons. I will try to post as often as I can, but I've gotten out of the field due to repetitive motion injuries from doing echoes for 30 plus years. I've already given you guys some insight into that, but please be careful when you're pushing the echo machine. You don't want to end up like me. I'm 55 and uh, I'm just a mess right now with I had back surgery and knee replacements and everything else. So um, if you would, please visit my Patreon page. It's easier to comment there. I will try to address all comments, but with the time constraints in my life now, it may be a while before I get to it. This is the link to it. Um, if you go there, you can look at the videos, and if you feel like donating, I would really appreciate it. Um, I'm on disability now, so <laughs> any money I get, woohoo! Um, and I want you to have a great day. We'll see you later.